Here is Bez. He's ready to go. We're ready to go. It's out in Moto2. Good start from Sam Lowe's. An even better start from he the heavy. Remy, come on. Remy Gardner then goes to fourth. That looks like Ralph Fernandez going wide. Really wide. Bezeki leads. Yeah, a really good start for August. On board with their Bezeki leading from through the first few corners already. Um, thought about a move there, didn't he? Sam Lowe's on Bezeki further back. Aaron Hunter, that Bosco Skura shot. Brilliant. All connect once more up the inside. The Gen Antonio just behind them. Behind him is the Amlo's now trying to challenge for the lead. That's getting quite busy because he knows that already that top four are starting for two Red Bull KTMs of Gardner and Fernandez. In third, Gardner ahead of his teammate, Ralph Fernandez, who's got the slipstream here, and Ralph Fernandez might just be able to up into third. Yeah, good job that there then by uh, Ralph Fernandez. Yeah, good for Fernandez. They've, ex they've exchanged places a few times now already yeah the problem is while well, they're not allowing further down Dixon then lost five places Fiola also not a good start yeah, in most end and pre-season testing his front end on the opening few laps here just looked at a tad twitchy knew an awful lot about in terms of race trim just behind him great start though for this race on this lap he's been picked off by Ayagura and Joe Roberts so he's back down in eighth place now the podium man from last Sunday here doesn't want to lose touch of Marco Bezzecchi. He's not put a foot wrong since the lights went out. Again, you can see though the back to pull a bit of a gap back to Ayagura. Augusto Fernandez is going the wrong way too, isn't he? On the 37. Zeki. Sam Lowe can't get close enough to him to attack. Two laps completed in this Moto 2 race. Yeah, this four, this quartet already cut above the rest. All four of them in the 59s quite comfortably. No, but it's top four. They're in a different league at the moment. Still, that lap record stands from Tom Lutie a couple of years ago. Through turns four, five. You know, it was the John Antonio out of the seat, lost all of his momentum. Augusto Fernandez did not even have to work. It's getting a bit tight. Ayagura is getting his gloves off. He goes through. Roberts, Kinnett and Agura ahead of him. Good ride early on from Aaron, um, from Ayagura in this race in third. He's closing. Look at Sam Lowe's early on the power there again. A bit of a pre-season that there were three big guns. That's Zeki Lowe's and Remy Gardner. Ralph Fernandez has been the surprise. Uh, Sam Lowe's then cha challenges one. Yes, he does. And he leads then. Now, this is the big question mark, Matt. Last week, taking the lead there from Marco Bezzecki. So, time to maybe get the hammer down for Lowe's. Yeah, from last week, what Sam Lowe's can do when he gets to the front. I wouldn't be surprised to see the Aussie challenge his teammate in a moment. Bezzecki, weren't they? Lowe's, Fernandez and Gardner, they all exchanged the fastest lap of this Grand Prix. The general patient. He's got to find a way through on Ralph Fernandez. He's so, so close to him here. It's hard to overtake. Fernandez, this Whoa! time around. Oh, it got loose. It got very loose. How on earth he got that stove's getting away. That could have been carnage. Yeah. By the time he got... Now has number 72, Marco Bezzecki. Because you can see Sam Lowe's there. He's not really making any progress in checking out away from finding this one up. He's going to go through the outside line, which might just give him the inside here, but there's no room at the inn. This race. You just get the feeling that Gardner's the only one that can hold a light to Sam out of him. Yeah, crucial last weekend, but Seki just went out a bit of a rear grip late on, did he? In the slipstream, perfect time. Slips on through as well, so with the two bike slipstream, Fernandez takes third for how much longer? He makes excellent wingman work there from the rookie, Ralph Fernandez, number 25. Fantastic race at the performance of Ralph Fernandez. Agura's in sixth place at the moment, comfortably keeping... I think last week the gap was well over a second and a half by the mm. time he try and reduce that gap or put the pressure on to see if Lowe's were cracking and make an error of his own. Like he's been challenged there by Agura. Yeah, I think Agura got it. No, it was close. He might not be... He looks comfortable on a Moto2 bike as well, doesn't he? The rookie Ayagura up into the top 10. A good charge from the number 62. Yeah, he's slowly building confidence on that Calex frame as well. Isn't he? Yeah, he's kind of run into a, a rather large brick wall and then he's doing mid two flaps again. Another couple of rookies who are there again. Fantastic work from them. Yeah, Ayagura on that last lap was four tenths quicker than Joe Roberts, uh, who was prominent in the top 10 this time last week. But at the moment, he's start as well apparently Simon Crowfast saying he was witnessing keeping compromises early charge too here's your top four with 14 laps to go exiting taking but easy again 
on the exit of corners, Sam Lowe's not able to get the power down, quite as extremely windy, his pit board, Remy Garner, and it's not a situation he was in last weekend, so the pressure is on, the pressure at the end of 2020 in Portimao, and you just had a feeling, didn't you? Oh dear, there's a big crash, is that Joe Roberts? He's yes, yeah, he is, look at his face, that is a face of thunder, I mean, talk about livid, they might want to give him... Remy Gardner in the slipstream of Sam Lowe's, is there going to be a change here? He's, gonna, he's not going to just struggling to stay in the pace you know, of these guys. Something happened between Roberts and Agura. Bike. That's rider error, unfortunately. And then just did a PB lap on that Look. last circuit, 59400. He's not in that comfort zone. It's not hooking up like he wants to. And Remy Gardner just calculating now the he's moment of choice to pick. Quite there. He's still doing a brilliant job to hold on to first place, but you just feel like it's a matter of time before Remy Gardner takes the lead. The lap times are not as easy to come by as what they were at this very stage he's having to work exceptionally hard to keep second to Lorenzo Della Porta who's only lapping 4, 5, 10 slower than these guys out front and yet there's no points on offer for the former Moto3 world thing respectively they're having a right old thing dong the pair of them Raul Fernandez that's clever clever work bit of a game plan forming here the two Aki Iho riders in the red back Seki was being cut adrift of this battle he fires in his best lap of the race of 59.399. The big, big group behind our lead quartet. Yeah, this is some battle, isn't it? And the Tony Arbolino that we saw in 10 on the Licramoli intact machine as Ayagura there, lovely, up the inside of Aaron Kinnett two years ago, or from last year even. Xavi Vieje then in that group. Someone was just going, Bobier has just dropped down the time screens. I'm not sure if he went off circuit or not. Yeah, he yeah. has. scoring finishing places as well. We mentioned this in here in Qatar. Yeah. Just when you think you've got your setup dialed in and everything's perfect, the wind changes direction. He said, that's been a problem in trying to shorten that steep learning curve in Moto2. He said, every try and find consistency with your riding and certainly with your setup, if you're not sure whether it's a problem from your riding or a problem with. At the moment, he's made a pretty good fist of it this weekend. This is the mammoth battle going out front, despite those wobbles a moment ago, Sam Lowe's looks like he's just settled a bit. Joe Roberts is of doors going on here from uh, Joe Roberts. Looked like he just exceeded track limits, and then as soon as he went off the kerb, the canal, I wonder already on the Bosca Scura, pushing as hard as he was in those first two or three laps, whether Canal couldn't get the bike stopped or turned. There was a all kind of mammoth problems mounting throughout the Grand Prix last time out. Pulled over to one side. Is that Marcon, or is it Baldassari? 50 points out of a possible 50, but there's 10 laps gone, 10 to go, still a long way left ah, at the moment, almost six seconds. Yeah, totally different league, the top four. It's unbelievable how well he has adapted to Moni Moore, and we're no, one and a half races into his career in this intermediate class. He looks so at home. The tyres wear, the fuel load lightens. He's got, of course, a lot of data and knowledge gathered from last weekend, which is going to be Fifth here is 21, De Gian Antonio on the podium last time out, being followed by the rookie, Ayo Navarro. Speed up Oscar scorer rider, there's Tony Arbolino, the experienced Swiss rider. He's down in 22nd, ahead of Chantra and Baldwin a couple of years ago. Lowe's again, just managing that gap to Gardner back, well, about, what, three tenths of a second behind his teammate. 100% sure, we just saw there from 5th to 13th what happened to Dixon in this race. No through. Yeah, Connect says, well, anything you can do, I can do. Down into pit lane with Simon. I believe you've got Joe Roberts with you. I have Joe. Not the ideal situation. Pretty, uh, not great. <laughs> to talk there because, you know, in, in situations like that, it's easy to, to lose your head. Chin up, Joe. Yeah, if you want to know what it means to these guys, you can just tell there the tone of his voice. How devastated and how a very solid top six ride, four start. And the wind is still a factor here. It's nowhere near as uh, gust. It's hard to know at this stage where the garden has got a little bit left, whether he's just managing his tyres, whether he, he hasn't got the pace to run away from Sam Lowe's because he would have already made the move on him. But there's still maybe to go. It was seven laps to go pre-race and Sam Lowe said that's the key moment of this Grand Prix. That's going to be to, to claim a scalp here as well. He knows that he's come down on this lap. Yeah, and again, I, I kind of ruled Marco Betsecki out of this race once before the break. There he was down. That's a horrible crash. He's almost gone to the fence there, Tom Lutie. Numerous barrel rolls. That's going to... To go, he puts lap. in his fastest lap. Fantastic stuff from Sam Lowe's. Remy Gardner was only a tenth slower. 
asking questions because they did yeah, not go like, across the line. No, their names are just plugged. I can see Schrotter. He looks like he's in yeah. considerable pain. And Jake Dixon there, you can just see on the floor as well. Jake Dixon, of course, could do without and any further injury. Yeah, of course. Uh, Either way, it's the end of the Grand Prix for both. Not sure what happened there, but they definitely uh, came together. Some low bikes behind him. Four tenths of a second clear is Lowe's. That's the biggest that gap's been between. To Trona Sprinter hopes then. Rest on the shoulders there of Chavi Vieja. Stefano Manzi, though, is now up into a great ride for the VR46 Academy man. Yeah, particularly look at his recent record, Steve. It's a pretty job. Yeah, Bersaki, unfortunately. Just like it's going to be quite a lonely fourth place for the Italian. He's comfortably clear of Manzi, who's just picked off the best ever performance in World Championship Racing. A couple of fourth places in the past for the 21 year old. Ralph Fade. He's not fading right now. So there is Manzi in fifth. Agura has also knowledge like gold for him in this battle. Also for the likes of Vietti and Arbolino. All of these rookies that have stepped up from Moto 3. Really, really class, aren't they? Manzi, there's eight or nine seconds up to Bedsecki in a lonely fourth at the moment. This one's going all the way. Celestino Vietti moves up into 11th. And he's just doing exactly what's being asked of him here. Get yourself to the chequered flag, stay on board. He's just at the fastest lap of the race, Steve. He's been told to go, and he's going. 59-131, oh, okay. Raron Kinnett, he was clearly unhappy with the performance of the Bosque Scura chassis last weekend. That's not going to ruin the two Red Bull KTM IHO riders of Remy Gardner and Ralph Fernandez chasing Dan Sam Lowe's. Uh, catches out Kinnett. He's had his problems with front tyre stability and braking throughout this. Up on him in that turn 16. Race over for Kinnett. Through sector one. It's the fast right-handers. Can he get on terms with Sam Lowe's as they then make their way onto the start-finish straight? Get back-to-back -back wins here in Qatar. Yes, he really is. Rose, he's shown no signs of cracking at the moment. You just wonder how much risk Raul Fernandez is going to be willing to take here because he's not going to have to worry about Betsecki. Risk over reward ratio being tested here for Fernandez. Has he got to say, OK, yeah, third place, that'll do for me. Onto the start, finish straight. He's definitely a lot closer again here, Remy Gardner. Go any faster. That's a pair of 159 ones on successive laps for Remy Gardner. The problem, deep into turn one. He's slightly wide into turn two, but he can make up for that. No, he's got Remy Gardner breathing down his neck. He's riding very well under intense pressure. On board now. Fernandez himself got back down to the 59 twos. He was just a fraction slower than Lowe's. Can anywhere. You can see him closing up here. Now, this is the section of the circuit where Gardner can't really analyse. He's got to try and find something. It's so, so fast through turns. To make a move into the left-hander at turn 15. It doesn't look like he is on this lap. But, Matt, I suppose strengths and weaknesses of Sam Lowe's are because he's sat behind the Brit now for quite some time. So he knows exa exactly what Lowe's' Calyx is doing underneath him. So it's all just about... Picking the right, Ralph Fernandez going to be able to hold on to the speed that has been upped here at the latter stages of 20. Gardner can't do any more. He cannot do any more. That's three successive 59 ones and some nine twos, and that's just keeping that gap around a tenth to two tenths. It's an excellent batting chance of taking the victory, and that's exactly what happened last weekend. Is history going to repeat itself here? Clinging on, desperate. not what he wanted. Fourth place last weekend, mugged on the last lap by the Gian Antonio, doing two minute laps now, and he's dropped down to 10th, the Italian. It's calm in the Elfmark VDS bottle. He cannot do anything that. else than what he's already done in this yeah, race. He's Has he got one last trip? He's not buckled yet, he hasn't cracked. Sam Lowe's, every time he's come over the line, over the last few laps, he's just seen. With two laps remaining, that is class. Now, has he taken this win? Or well, the Chambers there having one of his better rides. He's challenging still Ayagura and Chavi Vieje for uh, sixth place. Ni Arbolino, but it's the, the battle at the front that we're interested in. And I think that Sam Lowe's might have just broken the pair on that last lap. Sam Lowe's, boy, has he resisted some pressure tonight. Because Remy Gardner has tried absolutely everything with his armory. Twitch there from the number 22. But he's still got a decent well for Sam Lowe's because last week he was able to manage that comfortable gap back to Remy Gardner. Tonight, 
Keith to put arms length, hasn't he, Sam Lowe? There's going to be a, yeah. a, a, an you extra know. lunch coming from Remy, though, and you just want to place. I want that first both the two podium. These two can strap it out for the win. I'm not going to do anything silly and winding up towards the last lap. It's a great Britain Australia showdown. The Ashes on two. Not the penultimate lap of the race. What a lap time. That's two by me later, won't he? Just trying to cling on. Sector two, Sam Lowe's is strong in. Sector three is where we get ahead of the line when you've got an identical engine underneath you. Nobody giving an inch. Is he going to be close enough though? That's the problem. Coming to the face of the circuit where he's so, so yeah. strong. Turn 10. That's where he's been able to take some time back on Sam Lowe's in the braking zone. Who's got turn number 11? We'll hit the fast rights then. Turns 12, 13 and 14. Gardner's running out of time here. And closer. Where's the move coming? We come 15. around turn 14. It's turn 15. It's being lined up. Remy Gardner now. Offensive line. Gardner, he can't find a way through. Now he's going to gamble on the slipstream. Sam Lowe, oh, desperate to get the power. He's not going to make it. Back-to-back -back wins in Qatar for Sam Lowe's. A brilliant run. Last lap from that. both Lowe's and Gardner. And that just shows you what you've got. Fernandez, his first ever podium in Moto2 World Championship. Jousting it out for the victory on the final lap. And exchanging fastest laps of the run. Wasn't he coming out the final corner? He just lost the traction. And he squeezed on the throttle. And that cut top pressure throughout that Qatar Grand Prix. It was much, much harder as he anticipated than his win here of Sam Lowe's.